I'm going to talk a bit about one tool that we like to use at the very start of the Open Life Science cohorts, which is the Open Canvas. Um, and so, it helps if I'm on the right window. Um, I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, we're going to ask you to follow up after the call um, because it takes a little while to spend some time thinking about it, but we'll walk through what it is and why it might be useful just right now. Um, so just going back also to the Mozilla's open leadership framework, this is just to remind us we're focusing really specifically on the design element. So if you recall, Movika was talking about how important it is to design conscious pathways for people to contribute and to be involved in your open science and community projects. Um, so here we're looking really specifically at what, what we can do to, to design these pathways. Um, and this rubric, again, is something we'll see quite often as we're working through um, OLS. And so this time we're talking about ways that we can design our projects to empower understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion really specifically. Um, I'm not going to focus too much time on this, but it is really interesting to look through the open leadership framework when you have a minute or two. So this is the open canvas and you say, oh, no, it's a form filling exercise. It is, but it's a really useful one because it really helps you to um, reflect on what you're doing and where you're going and why. Um, so we're gonna actually drill into what each of these little boxes means and why they're useful. Uh, so we have some sort of examples here, so you can refer back to these slides and it sort of gives you some hints about how you might want to fill it out. But I'm gonna skip forward a little bit and just talk about each of the boxes individually and why we care and why we think they're useful. So first of all, we've divided this into two halves. One is on the left, there is the product. And on the right, there is the community. So one is really about the thing that you're offering. And the other side, we're talking more about the people who you're involving when you're doing this, because it's never really just about the project that you're working on. It's also always about the people that you're working with as much as anything. Um, so digging into box number one, the problem. Uh, so just if you can print this out, print it. If otherwise, bring it up on Google Slides and fill this out on your computer, but try and write down when you're doing your project, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? So um, for OLS, for example, the problem that we are trying to solve might be that uh, open science is not something that is well known um, and it's not something that's easy. You can't just spring fully form and know how to show, share your work in an effective way. Um, then if we move on to the next thing, what is then your proposed solution? So you know, you know you have a problem, how would you like to fix it? In our case, this was run a 16 week mentorship program to help people learn a bit more and spread the word to others as well. Um, and then how will you know that what you're doing is something that is successful? So what are your key metrics for this? So once again, for OLS, this might be, and it doesn't have to be, well, one example could be, um, OLS is uh, the number of people who have participated in the program. So in OLS 1, we had about 20 projects. And in OLS 3, we have almost 40 projects and over 60 participants. So this is a metric that shows us that we are, in fact, being successful in spreading the word. And then now that you've got an idea of what you want to do and how you want to measure it, uh, the next question is, what resources do you need to build this? And this could be um, I need somewhere to put a website. It could be I need people, it, uh, you know, I need their brain power. Maybe I need a coder. Maybe I need someone who's a community manager to help me out. Or maybe I want a designer. There are so many different things that you might need and it really depends on your project. But just try and think if you want to get the, the basics, just the real kickoff, what, what resources do you need to assemble to get there? And now we actually move on to the community side where we start thinking more about those people because one of those resources may in fact be the people. Um, so if you have someone who's contributing to your project, think a bit about who they are and what they might look like. Uh, so again, if I'm thinking about OLS, for example, then some of our contributors might be open science practitioners who are our mentors and our experts and they can actually give advice to other people. Um, I'm going to skip this box and move on to user profiles. So uh, the target audience. So who, who do we want to be using this? Um, so if you're thinking about your project and this is something that you're building so that other people can use it and participate, that's slightly different from contributors because contributors are the people who help you build this. Users are the people who actually use what you've built. And so for OLS, the user profile would be many of you who are here participating as the project leads and the mentees. Um, 
And then you start thinking a bit about the channels. So now that we know who the people we want to work with are, we say, well, how can we gain them? So for example, for us to get contributors for OLS, a lot of the time our channel was simply email. We used our personal networks and we said, hey, lovely person who we think can be a mentor, can you participate? Um, another one might be Twitter, for example, if you share on social media. Um, there may be other ways, depending on what your community is. It might be that you're reaching out to someone local to you or a research network or something else like that. Um, but that was previously for contributor channels. This is again that these are the people who are helping you build what you build. And now we're thinking, how can, what channels do we use if we want to find people who want to learn from what we build, who want to participate, but not necessarily as a contributor? So gaining new users for OLS, I think it, it, a lot of us has been word of mouth, for example, but also people who have participated have then shared it within their networks. And we've done things like podcasts and we've done um talks and we've done blog posts and we've done social media to try and gain the new users as in the new project leads and the new mentees um, so have a think about what your user channels are and how you'd get gain new users and this is the community engagement sort of subset of boxes um, and finally now that you've thought about all of these things think what is the clear message to state what you offer? You know, what, why do people want to, to come to you? What, what is the catch, the exciting thing? And this might be perhaps restating your problem and solution, but in a, in a short and concise sentence. Um, and also just explaining why you're different to others. So I'm trying to think what this would be for OLS. Um, <laughs> probably something about the fact that we are experienced open science practitioners who have uh, been working with community for um, collaboratively for quite a long time. Uh, and that we are able to teach this and pass this on to other people. But again, try and think about what this might mean for your project as well. Um, and so here is an example um, of one that's been filled out with a project in mind where people will get badges for uh, working on open science. So it gives you a bit more of an idea about what it might look tangibly with uh, when it's been applied to a project. Um, again, this, the link to the slides is available on the um, notes document, so you can go back to this and you can view it yourself in your own time. And um, we also have a link so that you can write your own open canvas. Um, and I think this is one of our assignments for the week, which is, um, so it's bit.ly slash OLS dash open dash canvas. Um, 